Hello, welcome back to Being in Books. My name is Alex and today we will be going through every single book on my physical TBR. <music> Should be able to see beside me here I've got stacks of books and my shelves are emptier than usual I went through and took off every single book on my shelves that I have not completed so yeah I'm not gonna give too much details about the book because that could take a while because we have quite a few here but basically I'm just gonna go through all these books and then next year we can look back and see how many of these books are still on my physical TBR a year from now. So yeah, that's what we're gonna be doing today. I've been wanting to film this for a little bit here. I just really haven't really had the time. Plus I never seem to be home when it's light out, but I finally am. So that's what we are doing. So here we go. The first book on my physical TBR is Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. Maggie O'Farrell. This has been on my physical TBR since last year, so just about a year now, and it is a like historical fiction about Shakespeare's wife and child. A House in the Sky by Amanda Lindhout and Sarah Corb Bay, Corbett, I'm assuming it's Corbet. This is a Canadian nonfiction book. And again, this has been on my physical TBR since the start of last year. The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. This is a collection of stories about Sherlock Holmes, obviously. This has been on my physical TBR since I don't actually know what year. I think it was 2019, maybe even 2018. So it's been on the TBR for a while now. And so far I've only read the first story in this, A Study in Scarlet. Moby Dick by Herman Melville. I have had this on my physical TBR since 2020 and it is a classic about a man and a whale. Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. This is another classic that has been on my TBR since the end of 2020. I really do not know what this one is about but it's a very pretty addition. Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens. Again, this has been on my TBR since 2020. I am on page 357 of this book. This is how much I have left to go and I just haven't got around to completing it. So yeah, this is still on my physical TBR. Homegoing by Yagyazi. This I bought at the start of 2021. I started reading it. I got to page 90, but it's a very heavy book and I just couldn't really focus on it at the time but it is a like historical fiction novel. 21 Things You May Not Know About the Indian Act by Bob Joseph. This has been on my TBR since the start of 2021. It is a non-fiction about the Indian Act. Myths of the Ancient Greeks by Richard P. Martin. This is another nonfiction. I was gifted this last Christmas, so it's been almost a year now since this has been on my TBR. Doctor Sleep by Stephen King. I was given this spring of 2021. This is the only Stephen King book I own. It was gifted to me by someone who knows that I like reading. Uh, this isn't really my style of book. I don't know if I'll ever get around to reading it, but I don't really want to give it up because it was a gift. So yeah. The Initial Insult by Mindy McGinnis. This was a book box book from start of 2021, I believe. It was one of the first book box books that I ever received. 
I have no idea what this book is about. Angela's Ashes by Frank McCourt. This is a this is a memoir, obviously, ooh, obviously of Frank McCourt. I don't know much about this book. I know it's pretty much like a classic. I cannot remember when I got this, but it's been a while now, maybe like 2019, I think. So yeah, this is still on my TBR. David Copperfield by Charles Dickens. Again, a classic. I started this one this past summer, actually. I got to page 220 and just stopped reading it. So another Charles Dickens that is still on my TBR. Moving away from some of these classics and nonfictions, we have Dark Harmony by Laura Thalassa. This is the third book in the Bargainer series, which I read the first book last year, I read the second book just a couple months ago, and I really enjoyed the series. But I went to the bookstore actually just the other day to buy some Christmas presents and I saw the third book in the store. And the first two I had to order on Amazon because they were not available in bookstores, at least here in Canada, but I guess they are now. So I was really excited, so I picked that up. So yeah, this has been on my physical TBR for like a week. Rule of Wolves by Leigh Bardugo. This is the sequel to King of Scars, which I read a couple months ago, like August, so not very long ago. And I purchased this book at the end of 2021. So it's been about a year since I bought this. Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. I am hoping to read this soon. It's on my TBR for this month, so hopefully we'll actually get it read. But this is a YA science fiction and this has been on my tbr since like spring 2021 i believe the voyage of freitas by tamara gorenson again on my december tbr so hoping to get to it soon this is a like historical mythology retelling or just historical f fiction i'm actually not entirely sure but I actually don't know how long I've had this book, but it was for sure 2021 when I bought it. I can't remember when. Babel by R.F. Kwan. This is a new release. I bought it back in October when it was released. I think it was October when this was released. But yeah, started it. I'm still on page 145 and hoping to continue it in the month of December. Castle in the Air by Diana Wynne-Jones. This is the sequel to Howl's Moving Castle, also on my December TBR, and I was gifted this for Christmas last year, so it's been almost a year since I've had this on my TBR. A Touch of Darkness by Scarlett St. Clair. This is like a fantasy romance, fantasy romance, Persephone and Hades retelling. This is the bookish box edition and I got this like March or April or sometime around that of this year. The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake. This was the March Fairy Loot Adult Book of the Month. So I've had this on my TBR since March and it is on my December TBR. Classic Science Fiction Collection. This is one we've seen a lot of this year. I have had this on my TBR since before 2021. I think this might be like a 2019 purchase as well, but I don't remember exactly. I have read a couple of the stories in this collection. I've read pretty much halfway through this collection of science fiction. And I'm hoping to one day actually complete the whole thing. Star Sight by Brandon Sanderson. This is the sequel to Skyward. And I got this book actually before the first book. Someone sent this to me last year, but they sent me the second one and I didn't own the first one. So I then went and bought Skyward. But yeah, I've had this one since like March or April, sometime around that time of last year, 2021. The Romantic Poets Collection. I'm pretty sure this was purchased kind of around the same time as classic science fiction. I was going through a phase where I just loved the Word Cloud editions. 
that these are. So yeah, I have read a chunk of these poems. I'm on page 187. So I have read some of this, but not all. Next we have A Crown of Gilded Bones by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This is the third book in the From Blood and Ash series. I bought this when it came out. Was so excited because I loved the first two. I started reading this one. I think I got like, I don't even know how far, not very far into it. And then I just kind of lost interest for some reason. This has been on my TBR since it was released in, I think 2021. Was it 2021? Yeah, in 2021. And then following that, I also have A Shadow in the Ember by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This was also released in 2021 and I bought it shortly after it was released. So I've had it since then. Another series that I have a couple books to read, we have Champion by Mary Lou. This is the third book in the Legend series, which the second book is on my December TBR to reread before I get to this third book. I bought this book, I bought this book near like middle of 2021, I think it was. So yeah, I've had it for over a year now. And at the same time, I also bought Rebel by Mary Lou. This is the fourth book in the series, but I think it comes after like a time jump. This was released quite a few years after the original three. So yeah, I don't really know what this one is exactly about, but it's in that same series. And yeah, I've had it since sometime in 2021. Then we have Unchosen by Catherine Blair. This was from a bookish box book, I believe. I got this near the start of 2021. I have no idea what this book is about, but I think it might be like a dystopia, but I could be wrong. Right, and then we have Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Su Lin Tan. This, is, this was one of my most anticipated releases of this year. And I got it in a fairy loop box in, it was either February or March, I can't remember what month this one was for. And for some reason I just haven't read it yet. But yeah, I don't, I don't have a reason for any of these on why I haven't read them. But yeah, I had this for less than a year and I really, I really want to read this one. And then we have A Game of Fates by Scarlett Sinclair. This is also a bookish box edition. They came as like a set, the first two. So I've had this one for the same amount of time as I've had Touch of Darkness. This is the second book, but I think this one is actually like a, almost like a novella or it follows a different point of view. I think this one might follow Hades' point of view, but I really, I really don't know. I did order the other two books in the series from them. They did those editions and they're delayed, but they'll be here Hopefully, I don't think they're going to be here within the year, actually. I think it'll be next year before I actually get them. But yeah, Game of Fate. All right, and then we have Ariadne by Jennifer Saint. This is a mythology retelling about Ariadne. I've had this since 2021. I think it was like summer of 2021 that I got this or like fall, something like that. Next, we have Renegades by Marissa Mayer. This is like a dystopia sci-fi kind of book. I love Marissa Mayer. Her Lunar Chronicle series was like one of my favorite series in high school, start of university. And this one was actually gifted to me by a friend when it was released, which was when? which was 2017. So I've had this book since 2017. I started it this past year, but I only got to page 99 and then I got distracted by other things, but I was enjoying it. So I'm not sure why I stopped, but there's just, there's just so many things that I want to read that I need to get to. So we'll get back to it eventually because I do, I do want to read it. Next we have She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker Chan. This is like a Mulan retelling, I believe. And I also have some other Chinese mythology in there. 
but I bought this one shortly after it was released, which was like summer 2021. So it's been over a year now since I bought it. Continuing on, next we have another recent purchase. Moving away from the fantasy genre for like a brief second, I have Love on the Brain by Ali Hazelwood. This book was just released like this past fall and I loved The Love Hypothesis. And then like last month, no, I guess it's December now. So in October, I went and read her three little novellas that she has. So I'm excited to read this one. I just needed a little bit of a break after reading all those novellas very shortly after one another. Okay, Gallant by V.E. Schwab. This is, I actually don't know. Is this middle grade or is it YA? I can't remember. But this came out in March of this year and I bought it right after it was released. So I haven't even, I haven't had it for that long yet. Be of Prey by Ayanna Gray. This came in a Fairloot box near the end of last year. So I've had it for probably about a year now. I don't know much about this one. I know it's like YA fantasy about some sort of magical zoo or something like that. Which is Steeped in Gold by Sianan Smart. This was a Fairloot edition last March. So March of 2021. So I've had it for a year and a half now. I started it a couple months ago, I think in the summer. But when I say started it, I read the first chapter and then had to pause because I was in the middle of a lot of fantasies at the time. And this one seemed very complicated right from the start. So I just wasn't looking to get into any more complicated fantasies at that time. We have The Hero of Ages by Brandon Sanderson. This is book three in the Mistborn trilogy, which I adore. And I read the second book this past summer and I'm very excited to read book three. So yeah, still in the TBR. I really, really, really am looking forward to reading this one though. And then following along with that, I also have the Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. This is the first book in the Stormlight Archives, which is like his major series in his Cosmere universe, but I can't read this one yet. I know I need to read Mistborn first, and then I don't know if I can jump into this one next or if there's some other ones I should read before that, so I need to look into that. But I own the first one, I just can't read it until I'm like caught up in that universe. Continuing on, I have The Pariah by Anthony Ryan. This is an adult fantasy I received in a book box last year, like summer of 2021, I think. It was in a Caffeine and Legends book box. And I do not know anything about this one except for that the main character is like an outlaw that's pretty much it next this is embarrassing the condition of this book but this is not this is not my book my books do not get into this bad of a condition but it is inheritance by christopher paulini you can barely read it over the tape on it this is the fourth book in the inheritance series which is like Aragon that series this is the last book I reread Aragon Brazinger Eldest back in I think it was 2020 yeah 2020 because I started this book in March of 2021 I was listening to the audiobook and I haven't touched it since then and then next we have Sunshield by Emily B. Martin. This was another Caffeine and Legends book. I don't know if this is more fantasy or if it's more sci-fi. I know nothing about this, but I've had it. I've had it since like middle of 2021. Okay, and next we have Dark Dawn by Jay Kristoff, this is the third and final book in the Nevernight Chronicles. The first two books I read last year in 2021. 
and I've owned this book since probably like March or April of 2021. Next we have The Dragon Slayer or Dragon Slayer by Duncan M. Hamilton. This was another Caffeine and Legends book. Once again, I don't know anything about this. I think out of the few Caffeine and Legends books I got, I've only read two. One of them being Bone Shard Daughter, which is one of my favorite new series. The other one was a book called Spellmaker. No, Spellbreaker. And I did not enjoy that book. So those ones have been very hit or miss for me. So I just, I haven't touched many of them yet. But this one's pretty short, actually. We have another Caffeine and Legends book next. I actually have all of them like in a pile together. I just realized I didn't mean to do that on purpose. But it is The Unbroken by Seal Clark. I've actually heard really good things about this one. But, and I got this one like middle of 2021. Okay, another Caffeine and Legends, The Obsidian Tower by Melissa Caruso. It's about some weird castle. That's all I know. Had it since the middle of 2021. If you couldn't tell, I kind of went crazy buying books kind of in the middle of 2021 and then it slowed down near the end of 2021 and then I haven't actually purchased a ton of books this past year. I've been a lot better about buying books but last year I bought a lot of books. Okay the last Caffeine and Legends book box book that I have is A Master of Gin by P. Jelly Clark. I've also heard really good things about this one. I know it's like historical fiction set in like Egypt and it also has some steampunk vibes I believe but I got this one also back in 2021. The last Caffeine Legends box I, book box I have is Shadow of the Gods by John Gwynn. Heard very good reviews about this book but I have not started it and I've had it since 2021. Okay moving on I have A Torch Against the Night by Salva Tahir. This was on my TBR last month. Did I get to it? No. I read the first chapter and then I got distracted by other things. This is the sequel to This is the sequel to Ember in the Ashes. I've had this book. I've had this book since this past spring. I believe I bought this in the spring. So it hasn't been that long. Next, we have The Bone Chips by RJ Barker. This is a adult fantasy about boats and pirate ships I think and dragons and I bought it I don't remember I bought this one in, I believe 2020 it could have been start of 2021 but I think this was 2020 Next, we have A House of Many Ways by Diana Wynne Jones. This is the third and final book in the Howl's Moving Castle series. And same as the other one, I got this as a gift for Christmas last year. Okay, the next two I'm going to put together because I bought them on the same day. And that is Fire and Bitter Blue by Kristen Kishore. I bought these like February or something of 2021. It was whenever the new covers were released because I was just obsessed with these covers. I read the first book, Bracelet, back in like 2019, I think. End of 2019. Maybe it was 2020. I can't remember. But when they released these new covers, I was obsessed. And so I went and bought these two. Um, they didn't have Bracelet at the time. And yeah, I still need to get Winter Keep. And now there's a new one coming out, Sea Sparrow. But I haven't read these two. Okay, and then the next chunk is all of the fairy loop books that I own that I've still not read yet, which there's quite a few. So we're going to go through all those. These first four here are like the additional books that were included in the fairy loop boxes, so not the main book. We have The Coldest Touch by Isabel Sterling. This is like a vampire 
LGBTQ romance. Oh, and this one was from the start of 2022. Twin Crowns by Katherine Weber and Katherine Doyle. This, I, I love this edition so much. This is like YA fantasy romance royals kind of thing. But this was middle or like spring of 2022. After Love by Tanya Byrne. Byrne? Byrne? I'm not sure. This was this book I got end of 2021. It's LGBTQ about a girl and a ghost, I think. And then we have An Arrow to the Moon by Emily XR Pan. This is a Romeo and Juliet retelling and I received this kind of early 2022. We have all the main fairy loot books that I still have not read yet. We have Defy the Night by Bridget Kammerer. I have had this since end of 2021. Only a Monster by Vanessa Len. This book I received early 2022, so this past year. The Darkening by Sonia Mara. This is the last Fairy Loop book I received before I kind of took a break from receiving Fairy Loop books. So this was like in the spring, early summer that I received this one. The Stardust Thief by Chelsea Abdullah. Again, this one was like spring 2022 or like end of winter 2022. This Vicious Grace by Emily Feed, I think. Again, spring 2022. And lastly, The Prison Healer by Lynette Noni. This was the first fairy loot book I ever received. This was, I think, March or February of 2021. Okay, we're almost at the end here. Next, I have this little set of Game of Thrones books. They're adorable. I've read the first two Game of Thrones books, but I have not read these three, which are Storm of Swords, Feast for Crows, A Dance with Dragons. If you've been watching, you have seen that I've been trying to slowly reread the first book, but it's been a struggle. I don't think of it I'd ever actually read these editions because the writing is so tiny but they're just like a pretty collectible that I have but I'd probably just buy regular editions to actually read. Okay and then this last stack which you can see beside me here are my like pretty collectible classics editions that I own. Most of them are Canterbury Classics, but there's a couple other editions in here as well. So the first one is Chaucer. Not Chaucer. Well, yeah, it's Chaucer. The Canterbury Tales by Chaucer. I started this in the summer. I did not get very far. I got to page 47, but because this is written in Middle English, I kind of have to translate along the way. So yeah, that's a lot of work to read this. And then we have classic works from women writers, which I just recently went through and read a couple of the stories in this one, but I haven't read many. Oh, and I've had this, I've had this since, I think either 2020 or like 2019, it's been a little while. Grimm's Complete Fairy Tales, I've had this from since 2020. I have read a handful of these. I'm on page 87. So I have read some. Le Mort de Arthur, which is King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table by Sir Thomas Mallory. This one was a gift, I believe, for my birthday last year. So since 2021. Edgar Allan Poe's Collected Works, Stories and Poems. I have had this since, again, I think 2019, but I'm not 100% sure. But I've read quite a few of the poems. Actually, I've read all of the poems in here. And then I've read some of the stories, but not all. Then we have The Iliad and the Odyssey by Homer. This one I've had since 2020 and I have not started this one. Next we have 
Bullfinch's Mythology by Thomas Bullfinch. This one I've had since 2020 as well, and I have not started this one at all. Okay, and then the last Canterbury Classics I have is a collection of Jane Austen novels. It has Sense and Sensibility, Pride and Prejudice, Emma, and Northanger Abbey. I've had this since, again, I think 2019. It could have been 2018, but I think it was 2019. I've already read, no, I've already read Pride and Prejudice and Emma in other versions, but I have not read Sense and Sensibility or Northanger Abbey. Okay, and then the final two books on my physical TBR. They're not Canterbury classics, but they're like a similar looking edition. And that is Mary Shelley Horror Stories. I've had this one since 2020 and I have not touched it yet. This was like a Christmas or a birthday present. I can't remember which one. And finally, I have a collection of Irish fairy tales. I bought this just this past year, like in the summer, I believe or like start of fall. So there we go. Those are all the books on my physical TBR. I think if my Goodreads shelf is correct, there should be like between 70 and 80. But when I actually go and edit this, I'll add a counter at the top of the screen so we can count up how many there are. And then next year, I will go back and film myself reacting to this and see how many are still on my physical TBR. Unfortunately, I think it's gonna be quite a few. So let me know what you think down in the comments. If you have read any of these, let me know what you thought of them. If there's any favorites of yours in here that you think I should get to first, or if there's any books that you think might not be worth my time, let me know. And I will see you again soon. Bye.